So over the past week, we had a plethora of different projects within James Gunn and Peter Safran's new DC Studios slate announced, which spread over TV and film, including some animation. And one of the surprise announcements to many, which was my favorite announcement from the bunch, was that of the Booster Gold HBO Max TV series. A TV series is the medium that would work best for Booster Gold as a character and does allow different opportunities for a lot of fun and just zany adventures in general that do differ from comic book projects we have seen in the past. And though a good amount of people may have heard of Booster Gold and been like, oh yeah, I mean, you know, they might have mentioned this property or that property or whatever is a bit of an Easter egg. They may not know who he is, his origins and everything that goes along with the character and that will be in this video. But we will also touch on some possible castings for the character as well, because it's a character that does need the right casting, in my personal opinion, to work properly. And this includes one of his little mates as well, which we will touch upon in this video also. Now, this isn't going to be the first time that Booster Gold does show up in live action on TV, as he did appear fully Booster Golded out, if you want to put it, back in the day on Smallville, and only over the past like year or so, roughly, on Legends of Tomorrow, though that version was a downplayed version that wasn't really given the next stage to progress, if you want to call it. But this will be the first fully focused venture into live action for Booster Gold, where he is the main guy, everyone is looking at him, and that's just the way he wants it. So to start off with, who is Booster Gold and how did he become a superhero? Well, Booster Gold's real name is Michael Carter or Michael John Carter, if you want to be exact. And he was actually born in Gotham City of all places in the 25th century and actually had a promising football career in his sights, which is actually where he gets part of his name of Booster from. However, this starts to fall apart when his mother falls sick and he takes up gambling in order to try and pay off his mother's medical treatment with all this, you know, leading into some bad stuff and him getting sent to prison. Now, when Michael or Booster gets out of prison, he does end up getting a job at a museum in Metropolis. And whilst on the job, this is where he learns about the Justice League from all of those years in the past. And after learning more and more about them, he decides to go back in time and not just watch them in action and take on whoever it might be or anything like that, but to actually join the Justice League. Now, in order to do this, he steals various items from the museum in the future, which includes a robot called Skeets, who we will come back to later. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, a time machine that belonged to a little known character known as Rip Hunter, who is, of course, Booster's son, but because of timey wimey stuff, always appears as Booster's senior in most iterations, which could also happen on the show. Who knows? Now, all of this museum stuff is the equipment that Booster needs to be a superhero. And that's exactly what happens when he arrives back in the 20th century. And though to him, he has these like basic ass gadgets that aren't that impressive for the 20th century, they come off as superpowers and he ends up saving the then president at the time, that being Ronald Reagan. So quite quickly, Booster is, you know, propelled up the superhero ladder, if you want to call it. And he actually gets his name of Booster Gold from Ronald Reagan after getting tongue tied when speaking to him. So now he is fulfilling his dream of being a superhero and is soon after this a part of the Justice League at that time. Now, when it comes to Booster Gold's powers, as you would have gotten from earlier parts of this video, he really has none. He has like no embedded powers or natural powers, whatever way you want to call it. It all comes from this, you know, these various pieces of gadgetry and technology from the future. But the major parts of his you know, power set supplied by that tech include flight and time uh, manipulation, but the power that makes him stand out is his ability to shoot these blasts of like gold energy from his hands. And I could see this being a funny part of the show if he didn't realize a certain piece of technology did this and everything like that. It could create some pretty comedic situations him being, and him being like, oh, well, didn't mean to do that. Now, I think the show could have some fun with all this future tech and just boost it up knowing what the hell's going on. So <laughs> fingers crossed that happens. Now, one of the big questions that always comes up when they are introducing a new character into a live action universe, and I guess more importantly, getting their own movie or TV show, is what storyline do they use for the character? And Booster Gold actually has a decent amount to choose from, despite the fact that many people might not even be able to name one or two of them. And for this show, whether it's only maybe like one season or more, you know, I think there's probably like two or three on the top of my head that I think would really work. But I can honestly see the show focusing on Dan Jurgensen's uh, initial run, who actually created the character, and some other pieces he was a part of within the Booster Gold run over the years since he was created in the mid-80s. With the main theme and, I guess, aim for the story to have an entitled sort of like up himself narcissist like a like a you know Michael Booster Gold Carter go through a pretty stressful and harrowing 
ordeal, whatever that might be in the actual show, and come at the other side of the story as not only a better person, but in the case of the show, deserving of also being labeled a hero. Now, I could also see elements of like Jeff Johns' 52 pickup uh, Booster Gold as well, which involves some other characters like Rip Hunter and some time travel facets as well. But that could maybe be for a potential season two once this character is laid out more, maybe for something in a movie as well that could involve some other characters. Though they could easily add the elements into this initial outing in season one for the character, depending on how big and expansive the show is supposed to be, or maybe as big as it's, as big as it's allowed to be, maybe there might be some restrictions. So who knows? In regards to the villain side of Booster Gold, like not Booster Gold being a villain, but his villains, he doesn't really have a straight up like pure enemy, like a reverse Flash or a Joker or a Lex Luthor or anything like that. But pretty much, I guess the Time Stealers as a whole, like as a group, are his biggest issue and someone they could use like the, in the show that's like associated with Booster stuff, uh, Booster Gold stuff going forward. Now, this is a group that contains characters that we've actually already seen in live action, mainly on TV, like uh, Despero and the Ultra Humanite, and then in film, like Mr. Mind. But it also features characters like Black Beetle, which, yeah, not Blue Beetle, Black Beetle, Per Degaton, and Supernova. So if they want to have a villain, it wouldn't shock me if the Time Stealers are used in some way, or maybe one or two of the members that are a part of it. But we don't know exactly what the show is going to be. It could be literally just... Booster Gold trying to be a superhero, maybe fighting like some other random villain of another hero, like someone that's Superman versus or something like that, especially if he goes to Metropolis. But if they use one of Booster Gold's associated villains, it could be the Time Stealers as a group or maybe one or two of the members. Who knows? Now, one of Booster's most useful gadgets and friends is that of Skeets, who is a little robot that he took from the museum in the future. And pretty much Skeets has all the knowledge and heads up for disasters and accidents that are literally waiting to happen back in the 20th century or for the show, I guess, the 21st century. So Booster is able to use Skeets and get to these areas just as all these issues are about to happen and he can save people and raise his presence and credentials as a superhero, which explains his pretty fast track to being a member of the Justice League. So I would expect Skeets on the show and they could have him like as, like as a bit of like a funny companion alongside Booster. There should be some banter between the two. I think it'll be pretty funny. Now, one of the big questions heading into a show about Booster Gold is Blue Beetle. Now, we know that Jaime Reyes is getting the movie in August, and it sounds like this Blue Beetle is going to be a part of this new DC Studios universe slate canon that James Gunn is going to use. So I would assume that that's the Blue Beetle that can be there, which is fine because that version of Blue Beetle has heavily interacted with the uh, with Booster Gold or Michael Carter in the comics as well. So it's not an issue. It's not going to be out of, you know, out of the blue or anything like that and feel a bit weird because it's not accurate to the comics. They've interacted so they could easily cross paths and it wouldn't shock me at all if Blue Beetle showed up in Booster Gold at all. I think that would, I think that's probably going to happen. I think if I had like 10 bucks and it was one thing I could bet on for something to happen in the show with some decent odds, it'd probably be Blue Beetle showing up. So I think that's going to happen. Now, as I said earlier in the video, casting Booster Gold is going to be a very important thing. You have to get the right actor. And it's not that like there's only one person out there that can do it. I think there's a plethora, you know, someone that's funny, but can also be a bit serious at the same time. They're out there, but you still got to find the right person. Now, there's a decent amount out there. Now, I've gotten four of the ones I've seen posted online a lot. And then I've put my own personal choice there now to... Just lay it out there. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, fan castings. I think they're sort of pointless at the end of the day because like hardly any of them ever happen. But I thought I'd play into it as well. So I've got my own fan casting that I haven't really seen out there too much. But, but the four that I've posted before that are, one, are some of the more common ones I'm seeing. So we're going to go in order from how much I... Well, not really in order, but like probably the first one I mentioned is the one I'm seeing the most and the one that I think a lot of people is going to happen so the first one is Chris Pratt. People think Chris pa uh, Pratt is going to be Booster Gold. And I mean, James Gunn has said that he likes to work with people that he trusts. He'd obviously trust Chris Pat, uh, Pratt after doing three movies with him. So it's not a bad choice. And he, funnily enough, he'd actually probably fit a Booster Gold pretty well, to be completely honest. So Chris Pratt isn't a bad choice. It's not my choice, but it's a, it's a choice I've seen quite a lot. 
The second one is actually one that surprised me when I saw so many people talking about him, but it's Andy Samberg. And now that I think about it, he probably could play him, but it'd be a random ass choice. Like, I don't think I would have put him in my top five actors to play uh, Booster Gold, but he probably could play him now that I think about it. So it's actually not that bad of a choice. Next up is Bill Hader. I actually like this one. I love Bill Hader and he'd actually be able to play this. If you've seen Barry, you know, he can play very serious, but then you know, Bill Hader is funny as hell and he'd be able to play Booster Gold pretty well in my opinion. And the next one I think is mainly based off looks, but then again, if you've seen Scream Queens, you know that Glenn Powell could play that type of character. So Glenn Powell, uh, Powell is not a bad choice to play uh, Booster Gold, though I know a lot of people want him to play Hal Jordan as well. And I, I think if I had to choose but if for him to play a character out of uh, Booster Gold and Hal Jordan Green Lantern, I think I'd choose Hal Jordan. Uh, but then again, he's been in like three movies now where he's a fighter pilot. So I don't know if he wants to play another fighter pilot like Hal Jordan. So I don't know. But my choice to play Booster Gold is one that I didn't see too many people saying. And I think it's a good choice, but it might be a terrible choice at the same time. It's just someone that I think could play it. And that's Joe Keery, who plays Steve Harrington on Stranger Things. I'm not one of those people that goes, oh, they're in this show, so they have to be in a Marvel or DC thing. I just think he'd be able to play it. I just think he'd be able to play it as like just play it pretty well. And if you've seen him in interviews and stuff, I think he'd be able to do it. So Joe Keery would be my choice, but it depends how old they want to go for booster gold is he meant to be in like his mid thirties had a bit of experience and he's just, this is like a bit of a last ditch effort to get to make something of himself. And that's why he goes back in time. Or is it someone that's a bit young, bit dumb, then maybe joke here fits into that perfectly. But if it's like middle age or not middle age, but like mid thirties, maybe then Chris Pratt, or maybe even like a Glenn Powell or Bill Hader works really well um, also. So my choice is Joe Keery if they're going for a bit of a younger one, but all those other ones would work if they're going for someone in like their mid thirties or something. And then Skeets. Now, I only have one person written down here, and it's actually someone that James Gunn is friend, friends with, so it's someone I could easily see given the role. And I put Alan Tudyk to voice Skeets. I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, a lot of people actually, I saw had him down to actually play Booster Gold himself, but I think Alan Tudyk would be a good Skeets. So that's my choice for Skeets, and I would not... I actually think he's going to get it, to be completely honest. I don't know who else they'd get to play Skeets if it wasn't Alan Tudyk. So yeah, Alan Tudyk is my choice for Skeets. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on it to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various thoughts on this and everything like that. Who would you choose to play Booster Gold? Are you excited for this show? Let me know your thoughts down there. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.